head of the G team in studio with us, Gordon McKernan. Good to have you back as always. Thank you for the time. How are you? Yeah, it's it's good to be back. I'm doing great. Man, you uh you're always on the go. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever we can get you in studio for a couple of segments, I'm always happy to do that. Did like I know it's been a couple of years now that you've been like cannonball into the deep end of the right. NIL stuff. Have you taken a step back and and sort of taken a breath and assessed all that's happened? Because I remember the first conversation you and I had, you're like, ah, I always like to try new things. And then boom, a year <clears> and you're like, I didn't think I was going to spend that much of my budget on yeah. NIL. And now, yeah. now like you're, you're full on in the deep end, man. Oh, yeah. I, you're yeah, just no, no getting out of this thing. It's uh, in my law practice or in business life or NIL things are still full speed ahead. I just walked out. Uh, I formed another law firm in the last six, nine months. I don't know if you knew about that. I hadn't heard. Yeah, Nobody's it's, told me. Yeah, it's called Bonacaz McKernan. And uh, Dawn Bonacaz has been a longtime attorney of mine who has done all of my transactional work. Okay. And she came to me and said, look, I'd like to like to do this with you. Uh, would you support it? Would you partner with me? So I said, yes. And so I was literally sitting in a meeting, and I'm without an, an executive assistant right now, and my schedule is all awash. I mean, you, I was supposed to be here at five today with you, right? I had to move it to four because <laughs> yeah. I forgot I was supposed to be going out to practice after this to LSU. And so I'm, I'm just in flux. But in any event, I'm in a meeting going over marketing strategies for this new firm. And I'm like, I'm texting Taylor. I'm going, what time am I supposed to be there? And he said, four. I said, no, but I'm not going on at four. That's like, get there at four, going to 420. He's like, no, you're going on four. No, 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 you're and on I just, four. <laughs> I literally had to walk out the meeting and come. So, yeah, so. Life is still uh, full throttle ahead for me. That's the way I like it. I like a lot of energy and like new challenges. And uh, so everything I've been doing, I'm continuing to do, but adding some new challenges as well. The pickleball deal you probably are aware of over yep. there on Burbank, and that's full throttle ahead. It's just over budget and taking longer than we thought, <laughs> right? So, like, like many yeah. things in life, I guess, yeah, many so new we, projects. Yeah, so we've got that. So things great. I'm blessed. When did um, – when did um, – uh, Amazon, or maybe Shaq's yeah. people, the production company, when did they reach out to you yeah. about being a part of the NIL documentary? Yeah. Um, I'd have to go back and see, but I, I wasn't approached first because they, they came to me um, several months after they were, were into it. LSU kind of reached okay. out to me and said, like, we want you to consider something. And they had already signed the deal with Amazon, right? And, they, and Amazon paid them, you know, the school money sure. to do it. And they had already had their prime... Uh, Figures kind of selected, right? Olivia, Livy and uh, Flage and Aaliyah and um, Angel. You know, they had and Jaden, yeah. kind of their main characters. They had already had. And it's my understanding they'd already been here interviewing and filming because when they approached me, they basically said, you know, here's our idea. Here's our concept. We think it'll be great. And we've been in talks and dealing with all these people and, and doing interviews and following them around. And it became apparent to us that, you were a central figure in all these people, right? Uh, didn't didn't do anything with Livy. We talked some, but mm -hmm. you know, represented, did a deal with Jaden, did a deal with Flage, did a deal with Angel, did a deal with the Lee. I mean, so I was kind of all in that. And they said, and then you're you, you're somewhat noticeable in town, right? Everywhere we go, we see your board <laughs> or something. So we we're like, yeah. they were like, we think that you need to be a part of the story, right? From your vantage point, born and raised here in Baton Rouge, love LSU how you got involved, what it meant in those things. So um, that was, wow, that was probably last Christmas, somewhere in there, in the fall, winter. Okay. And then um, from there, you know, did some negotiations, had to have attorneys look at what we can do and what we can't do and yeah. all that type of stuff. And then they started doing some filming and following me and my team and watching us inter interact with the players. And uh, that went on probably three or four times. They came down for big filmings. Mm. I, I became aware of them at the Heisman because yeah. the the crew, the, they were following, we were there covering the Heisman. Right. They were following Jaden around. Right. And I know I told the story before, but um, after he won it, there was the post Heisman party yeah. and like Cody Worsham was being interviewed in a hallway. Yeah. Were you there? But No, I, you, I wasn't there. The, um, and I, I like had to stand there for about 10 minutes and wait for him to finish yeah. this interview before I could walk down the hallway. Right. But, uh, and that's when he explained to me what it was. But the interesting right. thing about it, if you haven't watched it yet, and I think maybe five episodes have come out so far. Yep, that's right. I've seen the first one. Right. Literally, the opening sequence is yeah. you are narrating the like literally the opening sequence of the entire thing, which is pretty powerful as right. well to speak to what you've you've been in. Yeah, and, and that wasn't you know they didn't give me a script ever. This was just all off the cuff. They ask you questions and they interview and you talk and and uh, yeah, Alex pointed that out. My marketing director the other day he said, "Did you realize that 
this whole opening thing is is your voice and i went wow i sound somewhat intelligent that's good they, <laughs> they decided to use me to frame the story right so that was pretty good it worked really well yeah um I'm curious where you think, and we got Gordon for two segments. We, I do want to ask him what happened today with Tennessee and Georgia. We'll get some thoughts on that. I'm curious where you think LSU is in the NIL landscape here yeah. on what's today, the September the 17th. Like, and, and you've you've been very transparent too. Is like you you've had a lot of conversations with other collectives right. in NIL, like a lot of free flowing and sharing of information. Where where is LSU today? Yeah, I, I think we're in a good position, right? Are we in the best position? No. But I think relative to the other schools, we're in a good position. Um, the the donor base is still there and still still attached to the program, so to speak, and wants to support it. Um, and they've got a couple of guys who are really stepping up, and that's great to see. Uh, we're very creative in how we're doing things, I think, as a school. I think Coach Kelly is mindful of the salary cap. I hate to call it a salary cap mm -hmm. now in a sense, but it is. Every school has a certain amount of – dollars that they can dole out across all their sports, men and women. Um, and you have to be aware of that. So the, the he has a general idea between the school and sports properties and donors, what he can spend. And I think he's trying to do it the best he can. And, and you know, we've lost a few players because we're not just going to throw money at yeah. him. But I think he wants to build a place that you want to come here first and be part of this LSU experience. And then, by the way, you can make some good money here too as well. So I do think that uh, we're in a really good place, but I think you're starting to see the separation. I watched Texas this weekend, and um, they're looking much like we did four or five years ago in terms of the talent. You watch the speed, the size on the field, and that's directly due to the amount of money. They're just outspending everybody to get some of these, these mm. uh, athletes, right? And uh, I think that'll be addressed some point in due time if you have the rich schools really getting richer in terms of signing the better players. You know, it's going to leave a lot of people out with some very important congressmen and senators in different states who probably want to take a look at it, hmm. right? I mean, how does Alabama historically compete with the Texas when they're going to go to the oil money? Do you think that's that's so that's interesting because for as long as we've had the NIL conversation and for as long as the NCAA, for example, has asked Congress to intervene, oh. Congress forever, you know, has just said not interested, right? Do you think there's a point where they oh, yeah. where they do? Without a doubt. I, I do. I do think so. I, and I'd heard from you know, different relationships I have out of D.C. that it wouldn't happen this year because of the election year, right? But it's certainly going to in due time. And I think due time is mm. sooner rather than later, especially if you get Texas on a couple-year run of some national championships and just reloading, right, just differently than everybody else could do. I think you're going to have some senators in other states who've long been a part of the experience of an Alabama or a Georgia or Ohio mm. State and can't compete with some of these old schools and some other schools. It's interesting because there has never been parity in college football, G. No. I mean, it it's the haves and the have That's nots. Right. It's just yeah. what defines the haves and the have nots now is different than what it has been in the That's past. Right. Yeah. So I, I'll be fascinated. I, I am fascinated by the whole conversation. Yeah. And maybe I'll just come from a standpoint where as an LSU an admitted LSU guy, I'm an alum right. as yeah. you are. I mean, yeah. but like I want to see LSU do well and everything. I know you have an advantage in the dirt, like yeah. with the amount of talent in this we state, do. LSU. No doubt. Even though LSU is never going to outspend Texas, right? There's going to be kids that grow up here that'll give their arm, like Will Campbell, give yeah. his arm just yeah, to yeah. wear the purple and gold. That's right. So that's there's always going to be sort of that that's component. Right. We don't have to spend as much. We yeah. don't. And that that edge rusher that we lost out of Dallas last year is playing for Texas and is making a big impact. Yeah. I think he really, in his heart, wanted to come here. And mm -hmm. he loved the experience and what we had to offer him, right? Um, but they just put so much money on him, we couldn't compete. You know, at the end of the day, it just, they washed him in that. You are, are you are you comfortable saying, like, what financial range we're talking for some of these types of oh, players? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can give you a range, but, yeah, these these guys that we're talking about, it's, it's uh, you know, from three quarters of a million to a million and a half. That's yearly. Yeah. Right, you know. Um. Because I'll, I mean, I'll tell you, and I, I've been very comfortable with, with my, my source of this information, Dominic Williams, the, mm -hmm. the defensive lineman from TCU yeah. that LSU was recruiting. I am very confident in saying this number yeah. that he, his ask was one point two million dollars, and LSU was certainly not right. going to pay him that. Uh, I don't, I do not know what Oklahoma gave him. Right. I don't know if it was one point two, um, but I know that was his ask, yeah. and it was like, well. Yeah. 
Who was the uh, who was the receiver? The five number one we lost to uh, Texas initially, and then DeCorian Moore, yeah. who's so, now now at Oregon. A, a friend of mine over at Texas told me, um, you know, we got him from you guys. We put a good package together, <laughs> and then I uh, said, well, I need to talk to Oregon, and um, they heard that he had committed to Oregon, and they upped their offer substantially, and we're over seven figures, and um, he never gave him a counter. He didn't call him back and say, all right, well, let me see. I'll take that to them and see. So that shows you the depths of, you know, and you hear it that Phil Knight yeah. really wants a championship before he dies. You know, that's that's kind of what's coming back to me from my Texas friends is that, Interesting. you know, if, if the if the Nike billionaire decides to unleash it, you know, it's going to be tough. <laughs> and apparently that might be happening out there. But for the number one receiver to go to Texas and say, well, let me just go talk to Oregon and then go, oh, by the way, it doesn't matter. Don't don't even bother countering me. Yeah. Uh, that, oil, that oil money ain't sneaker yeah, money. No, that's <laughs> Apparently right. not. <laughs> I run along here. Got Gordon McKernan in the studio with us for another segment. We always appreciate the time. Of course, you yeah. can follow him on all the socials at GetGordon. You go to GetGordon.com. We've been great friends, great partners as well here with Gordon and his entire team. They've been great to deal with. So every time we get a chance to get you in yeah. the studio for a few minutes, we always appreciate it. It's just a great, great resource. I know our audience appreciates right. it as well because, <clears> gee, I mean, so, like NIL is central to every conversation you have around college sports now. It's unavoidable, yeah. and you've been at the, the epicenter certainly of, of LSU's NIL efforts. What's um, anything new for for the G team this this fall with football, or as we get closer to basketball? Um, certainly, you know, continuing to do what we have done, and you know, saw like DD Bro last night, mm -hmm. and um, talked to her. So that excites me about gymnastics, and then you know, baseball and. Someone reached out to me the other day about basketball and trying to do a little bit more there. I haven't, haven't really delved into that arena, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, for good reason, there's been some ups and downs over there. Um, yeah. with, with football, what, what I've learned, at least from, my, from, from our standpoint, is not to shoot all your wad before the season starts, mm -hmm. right? Because you're going to commit to these players, and you, and you want to keep them for the season, right? And uh, sometimes they, they don't act as they should, Sure. On the field and off the field. And it's better just to kind of let the season develop and see where the storylines pick up, both on the field and off the field, right? So, you know, like the uh, the Week brothers, you know, those are those are fun guys. And so we're starting to talk with them again, watching kind of what they do yeah. on the field. Um, and you want to let those stories, I think, organically develop as, as best as possible. And that's what we're doing. So we just, you know, our first big signing was Will Campbell. Um, you know, he was with a competitor law firm of, my, of mine up north for the last couple of years. And, and somehow we were able to persuade him to, to represent our brand for, right. for I hope not his last season, but in all likelihood, probably his last uh, season, right? I think it's going to be his last season, G. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, you know, it'd be a pretty big NIL check to get him to walk yeah, away from top 10 NFL money. I think money. so, but we have some fun things planned out with him. You know, cool. we're going to do a little alligator hunting, a little duck hunting, Very and it's cool. going to be, we're going to have Taylor, video and some of that so we'll bring that experience to the tiger faithful so they get to see will in that in that kind of light um but we'll just continue as as the season progresses and as as we listen to things to sign players that that help our brand as well as help themselves and the school yeah um i mentioned so gordon is pretty prominently featured in the money game which is the the uh, the amazon documentary if you haven't haven't watched it yet um it is pretty interesting. You mentioned as the season goes along, one of the stories that you tell in the first episode is signing Jaden Daniels. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you you can tell the story, but effectively, you said you you called one of your marketing people. Yeah, like so, after the Alabama um, game. You know, sitting. In, I remember the game so well. Shaq's on the sideline. We're down there with him first quarter through you know halftime. And then we go up to watch it, and uh, you just that energy. I mean, it's like uh, no experience I've had in sport in a long, long time, and. Um, Watching that two point conversion that we win, we go for it and all that. Uh, I text BK, right? I probably shouldn't have. I was just so <laughs> caught up. And, 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 they, and Amazon picked it up. They go, you know, said, You've got big blanks. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I mean, man, hats off to you. Basketballs. Yeah, did big basketballs. And the second thing was, I, I text my, my marketing director, Alex, said, I want to sign Mason and Jaden Monday. Yeah. And I had no idea, but at the time, Neither one of them had an NIL deal, right? They came in the office. I met with them. I'm like, no NIL deal? You're the starting quarterback at LSU? He's like, no, I don't have one. I was like, well, we're going to take care of that. So I signed him just to a, a two-month contract, paid him a lot more just because I, think I was Alabama. We beat him. I just wanted to do it. And, uh, <laughs> and then I uh, thought, okay, I'll sign you at the beginning of next season. And then it, the Amazon documentary m mentions it. Uh, 
I was dealing with this mother. Yeah. She's um, she's colorful, and um, she's Reg a, Regina's a firecracker. Yeah, man. she's, she's awesome. a strong, a strong woman. And uh, so we came around for the next negotiations. Man, it was just we were worlds apart. And, yeah. And I think she was kind of like a prophetess or something. She, my son's going to do some special things, and I'm like, I'm sure he will. But you know, we we had a good year last year. We had a great year. So. Based upon all these things, I, I could pay him really good money. I was talking several hundred thousand. Yeah. But she had she had like Heisman numbers in her mind. I tell you, she she saw it coming. She knew it. In, in hindsight, I wish I would have signed yeah. him, right? But uh, we didn't, but we're still friends and it turned yeah. out fine. He know? well, he had a great year, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was sensational to he watch was. and central to the to the documentary yeah. as well. Um so if anybody hasn't seen the the documentary yet, the the money game, is there is there anything else like I mean, I'm interested in my own because I said I've just watched the first episode. Right. What What can I expect? For, have you seen the whole thing yet? No, I haven't seen. Oh, the whole okay, thing you haven't yet. watched it. No. So as much as you see me out there in public eye, I, I don't like looking at myself or watching myself, and I get real. I don't say nervous. You know, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to affect the school, my brand, my family. It's sure. a, there's some anxiety with me watching myself, right? And sure. I, I don't do it easily. So usually, what happens is I, I get some positive affirmation from my friends and family go, you didn't bomb. You didn't look terrible. You <laughs> no. know, whatever these things, it's okay to watch. And, I, and I've gotten it. So I started watching it. I haven't finished it, but I was that nervous. You know, Just to watch it. Yeah. Just, Man. It's, it's stupid. Uh, that's not but stupid. I, that's it's, how I am. it's just what it is. Yeah. Um, so you can catch it on uh, on Amazon Prime. I, I, it's it's exceptionally well done. And they chronicle, I mean, there's just so many storylines around LSU. Oh, yeah. Just when you think about Olivia Dunn and Angel Reese. I mean, it's all Flage, Jaden, all the things we've talked right. about. It just, it, it really is incredible in this era how much of the sort of um, pop culture crossover there's been with LSU athletes oh, yeah. into popular culture yeah. who, who have been sort of transcended in their in their sports. Oh, no, no doubt. And just looking at the at there, I mean, the star power, the celebrity power that's just in that in that picture right there. I mean, those are the highest paid. Athletes, NIL athletes in in the country last year. Livia and, and Angel, top. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then Flage has her whole whole rapping career yeah. and all that. And we happened to do that jingle and yeah, and that's part of the documentary and they liked it. And so Oh, I can't wait to see that part of it. That was that was the Super Bowl special yeah. where the Get Gordon jingle uh, rap right. by Flage was right. awesome. That's uh right. Gordon's in studio with us for a couple more minutes. Uh the other thing I wanted to ask you about, so we've talked a ton about NIL, but you know, um RevShare is coming next year as well. I'm not sure if you saw this today, but the University of Tennessee announced they are increasing, they're putting what they're calling a talent fee on ticket prices. So they're going to increase the ticket prices for every sporting event wow. by 10%, and that's going to go directly to help with that revenue share. They said it should cover roughly a third of their their revenue share expenses, wow. just that. What's your thought on, on something like that, on, on putting a effectively a tax yeah. on tickets to well, help with the rev share. Yeah. I, I, like most Louisians, we don't like taxes. And, yeah, no and we doubt. call them all sorts of other other names to get around it being a tax. And, and I hate that for the everyday fan yeah. who looks forward to that game, you know, going since I was a child in the 60s. And everything gets more and more expensive and licensee fees and seat fees and everything's expensive. But it's just the name of the game, unfortunately. I, I think it's smart. And, and, you know, athletic director Scott Woodward is – is the master at, at finding funds, how to help a program in a, in a whole university. I think he's done a great job with some of his deals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad he hasn't done a tax on, on the everyday fan. It may have to come to that if everybody else institutes it. What are you going to do? And, and I hadn't, hadn't seen the Tennessee thing, and you mentioned earlier that they're also passing a law basically saying, NCA, you can't mess with us. We're going to do what yeah. we want to do. We can pay our schools. And, and I would imagine all schools will follow suit. And ultimately, it's going to have to decide, are we really a part of the NCAA and we're going to have some governing body that's going to administer a fair set of rules for everybody? Or is it just going to be the wild, wild west from the institutional side? Mm. And when you go there, the really wealthy institutions are going to win at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So what do you think? So that's that, that so that's, was um, signed into law today in the state of Georgia by their governor where Georgia. Where, where Georgia, uh, universities of Georgia, can pay their student athletes, so Georgia can effectively pay an NIL deal to its That's student right. athlete. Um, it, from a legal perspective, and I know you, I know you, 
I know an, I live with right. an attorney. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. or I should say, I live with an attorney. I was raised by an attorney, so I understand that he's gonna. You're gonna talk about case law, and you're gonna say right. precedent, and I get it. But from what we know with the NCAA, like, does the NCAA have a ground, like a, a legal leg to stand I, on? I wouldn't think so to override a, a Georgia law like that. Now, remember, the NCAA is a is a member-run organization. You're, it's part of something you join, right? Yeah. Now, they could sanction Georgia or other schools and kick them out, right? And then what does Georgia do? Who are they going to Who are they going to play? That would be one thing. But, you know, when you hear about these things, it just begs for a federal solution. And I, you've got to, it's got to be coming because it's, I, I don't think any of us thought three years ago that a state would pass a law which allowed the the, the university, the local <laughs> state university, to start playing players to that degree. And when you do that, that's where Congress gets this patchwork of different states. Mm -hmm. They go, "That's not fair. We're going to do something for everything." Yeah. So it, it's it's coming. Uh, we'll see how it uh, how it may go. In the meantime, Gordon McKernan in studio with us. Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys. Get Gordon.com. You know the drill. Make sure you catch him on the money game. He's got to get the, to LSU practice. <laughs> so they're, like they're gonna. What you gonna do? You gonna give the team pep talk no, today? What's, no. what's going on over there? No, they're. I think they're just go watch. You know, from time to time, I like to drop by and yeah. see how they're doing. And uh, got some NIL discussions that are gonna happen with some of the administration out there on some things they want me to to look at and just give an opinion on. So go go do that. Tigers, um, I know you get to watch the team. You get to go to a lot of the games. Yep. How are you feeling on the field? Um, you know, I had lunch with uh, Joe Sloan on Monday. Nice. <laughs> He's a big him. whiskey guy, by the way. Are you, is, are you a is. whiskey guy? I do like whiskey. I I'm, a, I'm a giant, I know I'm you're a giant, giant whiskey I need nerd. To, Taylor, remind him, we need to get him something he doesn't have. And he probably, <laughs> he probably has get, everything. Yeah, I probably do. You don't even get me anything, but uh, I'd love to have gonna, a pour. Gonna, you, me, and Joe. You, me, and Joe. We'll go have some whiskey. But, you know, and I don't want to discuss all the things, but We've watched a few games now, and I probably have some of the same questions that you have in your mind. Yeah. And I want to get away from it and say, okay, Joe, so tell me this. Tell me this. Because and, and, and to one thing I said, and I told this BK last year, I said sometimes you, a little messaging to the public, to the everyday fan, to help us understand some of the things that are occurring on the field when we see because we're so invested in it, that'd be great for you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to keep us in the dark on everything. I know you have strategies and things like that, but – I think some of that would go well yeah. to the Tiger faithful. Yeah. Right? Just got to win the next two. That's right. Win the next two, That's get right. to your open date, yeah. and go give them hell against Ole Miss. I agree. You managed to pull that one off. Yeah. The entire tone Everything of the yeah. season changes. And they, they look good right now, Ole Miss. They do look good. They do. Um, they haven't won here since 2008. Right. So Tiger Stadium can be a pretty big uh, yeah. influencer of I an would, outcome. I would agree. Uh, Gordon McKernan in studio with us. Always appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much for the time. Yep. Glad to be here. Thank you.